Welcome everyone to Unscripted Coding. Today we're going to do a pretty short video and we're going to talk about Active Pieces. Active Pieces is an open source business automation platform and it is an open source alternative to Zapier. Now I'm just going to caveat this, we're not really going to be building very much. Uh, we'll talk about the flows uh, very, very briefly. But um, I'm just having some problems with my streaming recording software, so I can't really bring uh, other windows in. So we're just going to talk about this briefly. Basically, Zapier is a great automation service, and the TLDR is that Active Pieces is a uh, far less integrated, but an open source alternative if you're looking for something cheap and something for your hobby usage. Um, for these automation softwares, uh, the idea is really simple. You're, you're connecting different pieces so that you don't have a person in between these software. So, for example, right here, when you see something on Facebook, you then want to connect it to Slack and then connect it to Salesforce. Uh, normally, you have a person in between all of these steps. I might be a clerk or, or uh, a telemarketer, and um, I'm just there typing into my computer, moving from Facebook to Slack to Salesforce. But the reality is you can automate these things, and Zapier has over 5,000 app connections, and it very much is geared towards a pretty lean type of business, I think, um, to, to have some sort of flexibility to code, to uh, run this up yourself. <clears throat> but uh, very simply, the idea is you, you take these different pieces and you connect it together. Now, for me, quite often my intake is email. People email me uh, through various forms, so I might have a website with a customer support form, and when they send it, I can use the Gmail hook to get that data. And it, it will know whenever there's an email coming in. But even better yet, you, you can have all sorts of parameters and conditions around it. So an email comes in. Um, you're going to check maybe the subject or, or maybe the content of it. And you're going to realize, hey, this is the standard support form. And your next step might be putting it into Google Sheets or, or uh, OneDrive or somewhere where you're logging that in a nice, simple format so it doesn't get lost in your inbox. So when an email comes in, uh, a trigger, it satisfies those conditions, um, then you're going to connect it to Google Sheets and create a new row that says who who message, what they say, you know, when it came in, blah blah blah, whether you dealt with it yet. And this is just a very, very basic flow. You might create a sheet, you might then send out another email, and then you could for some reason put it in Notion or Discord and, and uh, connect like a thousand apps together. And what is really impressive about Zapier is that there are just there is a connection to most of the major software out there and I know a lot of businesses use a lot of lean small startup -y type of businesses and it can't be beat you you get an email immediately you send out your stripe invoice um, send out PayPal, I was thinking more along the lines of Salesforce and and um, Monday and those kind uh, and I'm just thinking those kind of Kanban board things. And it doesn't always have to be external facing either. So certainly a customer emailing you. But if you're a really smart, talented person, you might rig this up for your own um, your own inbox and I might be dealing with people internally and I'm just sending out emails uh, automatically. So um, lots of different ways to connect this. Uh, these are not what I was thinking of. Uh, there's just this app I'm trying to think of that I can't get the name of. But um, whatever it may be, you know, 5,000 apps, it's great. But the problem is the pricing. Um, 
you know, I don't think, I don't think businesses are really going to blink when it comes to $133 a month. You know, you can do like 2,000 tasks a month. You, know, you can you can increase uh, the the amount, but it's not expensive for what it does if you're a business because you think about it, these people can easily make uh, $20, $30 an hour and, and can go much, much higher, of course, using Canadian dollars. Let's use US dollars. The problem I have is that um, I'm at the free kind of tier. I'm a hobbyist, and I imagine many people watching this video are trying things out, are in that hobbyist level as well. A hundred tasks a month and a single step, meaning that there is a trigger, um, so a condition, and then one action afterwards. Whereas the rest of these are all multi-steps. You can have a trigger, send out an email, add to sheets, do different things, and I, I kind of want those multi-steps. Um, that's a problem. You have a, a, num a limited number of people as well, you know. Uh, you can only have one user, you can only have five different flows. Uh, really, really problematic. Uh, Zapier only checking once every 15 minutes. It's not great. Um, this is where Active Pieces comes in. Uh, they are open source, so you can see it on GitHub. I think they lower, uh, they layer some um, commercial level on top of it as well. But in theory, you can host it all yourself on your own server. You know, throw it up up on AWS or Azure and you could get started for far less than $19.99 and you also have uh, a free tier as well 300 tasks a month um, unlimited flows unlimited steps so that breaks the barrier for me uh, 100, 100 tasks a month really okay um, 300 is of course nicer but the real brutal part for me is the single step so um, having that unlimited flows unlimited steps is really big for me here's the problem though active pieces is I think relatively new um, and so they don't have that that many um, they don't have that that many apps you can automate with so uh, the big ones are covered Google Sheets, Gmail, um, SendGrid, MailChimp, Slack, uh, Google Calendar, you know, all of the major ones are covered as far as I'm concerned because I'm, I'm in that Google ecosystem when it comes to a hobbyist type of site. Um, but of course, if you're thinking as a business, you're, you're, there's no Salesforce in here as far as I can tell. Yeah, no Salesforce. Um, lots of different problems here. The big one for me and why I'm, I'm really excited to try this is you can actually get an HTTP request. Um, and as hobbyist developers, I think most of us watching this, that unlocks so, so many possibilities for us. Because if you can automate an HTTP request, what you can do is send it off to an Azure function um, and Azure function can connect with just about anything over API. So um, my flow, my very nice, handy, uh, simple flow right now is email. When I get a new email and um, the subject is uh, a specific thing, um, then it triggers a flow. So this is the trigger, and then the next one is send an HTTP request, and very simply, we could send one request to an Azure function that I develop, send in the parameters, and the world is, is my oyster. I can do whatever I want with it, and I don't even need multi-steps, but in theory, I might want to log this into uh, Google Google Sheets as well, or Google Tasks, or even send multiple HTTP calls. Um, but that's that's really briefly what I wanted to show you because this is a no-code kind of platform, and if we inject a bit of code 
in by spinning up our own Azure functions, just throw it on the free tier, um, we can do so, so many things. Now, the other thing that just caught my eye here is I didn't realize there's an open AI um, connection as well. And I, I wonder what we can do here. So uh, let's add open AI right here. And we can use uh, chat GPT to generate some text. So that's really interesting. We'll put in an API key um, and and uh, ask a question based on what we get out of this email. So uh, it could even get more complex. So I will get the email, I'll use HTTP requests, I might even clean up the data, take the data, ask ChatGPT something, and then move it on to email. And all of this is a pretty uh, simple, nice, uh, easy interface. Anyways, uh, I think I've been rambling on long enough, but long story short, um, Zapier was something I was using a little bit for a long time, but I, I was always very limited by the free plan, and I just didn't want to pay 20 bucks a month. I didn't use it enough. And so recently I needed to run something else, and Active Pieces came along to uh, save the day. So uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.